Welcome to the F1 2024 US Grand Prix predictions. I'm Sagan. I'm joined by a little lit ill Ajax. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Not much of enthusiasm from your side. <laughs> assuming you're just, I'm assuming you're just not feeling well physically. That's probably. Yep, it's finally over the long wait. I think there's another like two or three week break after the, these three. I think this is a triple header with US, Mexico, and Brazil, and then it's another break <laughs> before the final triple header of the of the season. So there's not there's just so many breaks that it's it's just not a good counter this year. But but the season, the races make up for it. At least uh, some of them. Uh, the last one in where was it? Is it Baku or Singapore? I can't remember. Singapore, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, Singapore. Uh, wasn't the the best race out there, but still gave us some hope for the championship, at least uh, waiting for the final six races of the season and final three sprint races. This is one of them, uh, beginning in the US. Uh, I think there's another one in Qatar and another one in Brazil. So I'm always excited for uh, for Brazil and this, this track as well. I think those two tracks are very good for sprint race. Uh, not sure about Qatar. Um, I mean, Piastri won last year. I should be happy about that, but uh, I just I don't think that track is suitable for Formula One. To be honest, I would be rather having Malaysia or Hockenheim or whatever other track there is. There are so many good options. Yeah, exactly. There's there's just so many good options. Uh, but we're having the well, the oil money in Formula One. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Probably, I think it's this year and the next season as well. Because, uh, like, I don't know if you remember the images, uh, the Kidia speed track or whatever it was called. Like, we had those great, like, uh, giant, like, hoops or whatever. It's like Zandvoort, but in midair, it, it looked ridiculous. And I, I, I don't know how are they gonna build that within uh, whatever time they have left because i don't know if there's any progress i just assume we're gonna stick with this little sally circuit for a long while uh i mean uh, yeah yeah well back to this weekend because we're for a uh, cota the circuit of the americas uh, I, I'm a little bit biased, but I would call it one of the best circuits on the calendar currently. Because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, like, it, I get. I guess it's my opinion. I, like, ever since I started watching Formula One and started playing the F1 games, I really, really enjoyed uh, Coda as a track to drive on and to watch the races. Because. Like every single year, we're getting a good race there. Like 2018 with Raikkonen win, 2019, uh, if it was the Bottas overtaking Hamilton for the win. Obviously, 2020, we didn't have a race there. 2021, a thriller with Hamilton and Verstappen fighting for the last uh, to the last lap. 2022, uh, that wasn't that good of a race, honestly. Uh, I, yeah, Matt. Uh, no, it was 20.3. 20.2 was the one where Max had a, a, a botched pit stop and still won by like 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you didn't know that. Uh, yeah, 20.2 US Grand Prix wasn't very memorable, but the last year one was pretty good as well. Oh yeah, that uh, oh that was yeah that was the race we had like Sebastian Vettel in the top five for half the race until until they screwed his pit stop and he like finished in P eight overtaking Magnussen on the last lap. That was okay. I, I'm taking my words back. That wasn't the bad race. <laughs> to be fair, uh, unless he's winning by thirty seconds in twenty thirteen. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not getting much of those anymore. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Seb is gone and probably not returning unless I would be to build a good car for 2026 and 2027, perhaps. Seb might come in. I don't know. Uh, a German German driver in a German car that's fighting for a championship. That's probably too much of a, of a copium, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to get to the predictions themselves because so, I'm not very hopeful for... Uh, for uh, as close a racing as we had last year, despite the season being pretty close, I think it's going to be one or two teams in the top. Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, actually I'm going to start this this time because I think you started last time, so I should be should be starting. Uh, qualifying, I think it's Lana Norris on pole position. Uh, actually, we're doing qualifying first and sprint because I, I, uh, I screwed it up. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, qualifying, I guess, pole position first before the sprint. Lana Norris on pole position. I think Claren will be strong as they have been in every single race, pretty much. Uh, well, uh, not this season, but ever since the Miami upgrade. Uh, we saw McLaren's being arguably the fastest car of, of the stint uh, since Miami to this day. And Lando has been rapidly qualifying, especially qualifying. Not much on the on lap once, but <laughs> I mean, he, he actually finally led after lap one last time out. Uh, and I've the doubt, I should absolutely, absolutely praise him for that, but still, like, just a slight improvement in that case. Um, your pole position, buddy? Good, good. Norris and this P2. P2 for qualifying. I'm gonna go with a driver that I haven't got it in a while. I'm gonna go with Max Verstappen for P2. I think he's gonna be much, much closer this weekend to Lando. I think Coda will suit the Red Bull uh, much, much more than the last few circuits. Uh, so yeah, we've seen pretty much the worst kind of circuits for the Red Bull car. and. We're getting to the traditional ones now. I think Red Bull. They said they fixed their car or much of much the issues that they had ever since the summer break uh, ended. So I think they're going to be back on track, fighting McLaren for the win. Fair. Mercedes constantly go, oh, we fixed the issue we had with the car, but they're, they're still not at the front, so I can't sort of call them out by me or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, for the exciting end of the season. PS3. PS3. Yeah, I'm so the me bro. PS3. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine why I did not, not like no no one think of that before. Like it's it's made so much sense. <laughs> PS3. <laughs> Alright. My P3 is PS3 P uh, sorry. <laughs> Oscar is my P3. Uh I, why cannot it copy? Okay, fine. Um, Oscar is gonna continue uh, with driving the fastest car and uh, driving in a, in a pretty quick way. I mean, still beating my uh, beating my teammate and Verstappen, but that's to be expected at this point. Uh, both of those drivers are, are fighting for a championship, so they have to be one hundred percent on it. I think PS3, just like last year, will fall, fall a bit behind Lando in, in terms of pace, because last year I think it was one of those weaker uh, weekends for PS3. It was pretty off the pace, uh, for, especially from Lando, so I think that's going to carry it over a little bit to this year uh, with PS3 and P3. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Last race, Russell. <laughs> so harsh, but it's so funny as well. <laughs> yeah, fair, 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 fair opinion. Um, I'm just basing it on last year a little bit too much. I think Russell's going to struggle compared to Hamilton. I think last year it was one of Russell's weakest Grand Prix last year because he was like so off the pace of Hamilton, both qualifying and race. So I'm just gonna go with that. I think Hamilton will beat Russell, but I think actually P4 will be Charles Leclerc, because for Ferrari, I, I, I cannot doubt it, because it's... It, they brought the upgrades, obviously they worked really well for Monza. Uh, Singapore arguably should have been in the top 3 with Charles, uh, if it wasn't for for their cool fun shenanigans, and, and yeah, just... I think they're gonna still be very quick, just not on the pace of McLaren's and Max, because uh, I, I don't, I'm not counting the Red Bull as a as a team. I think this there's two different uh, pace like uh, sections in that team. Uh, yeah, I'm just putting McLaren's and the uh, Max in the league of their own, basically. <laughs> okay. Be fair, if Hamilton gets P4 and Russell gets P6, it's still get a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, my P5 is Lewis. I think he's going to qualify his teammate. Checo was not much of a competition, and uh, Carl Sainz in the Ferrari. I think he's going to be up there, just not quite in the fight for a podium. No Red Bull in the top five. I mean, I would love your scenario to happen in, uh, in terms of the championship fight, but I just it just seems so unrealistic. Coda is such a such a strong track for Red Bull and Max especially. Like Max has never finished here, uh, like outside of the top five, you know, even in the Toro Rosso. Uh, they're just such a good driver on this track. I just cannot imagine him out of the top five, let alone like top whatever. Right, right. I'm probably gonna something something gonna happen to Max. I assume. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Get to that later. Uh, spring qualifying. This is gonna be very much the same. I think Lando is gonna get a spring qualifying pole position and yeah, the uh, fastest car, very quick driver in qualifying. I think he's gonna get done, get it done again. Okay. Uh, Ball positions are matching for both of us. Interesting. <laughs> true, true. Okay, I'm gonna go with something that's bold but also makes so much sense. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm having Max winning the sprint race in Coda. <laughs> I. I 
I think this sprint will be Max overtaking Lando on, on t into turn one and then just defending. I think this is pretty much just gonna happen. What's gonna happen? Uh, McLaren is not gonna have that much of a pace advantage. They may be some overtake attempts, but I think in the end, uh, gonna end up similarly to the Austria sprint where Lando is trying to catch Max, but uh, eventually just falls off. Um, I think Max get, get gets it done in the sprints. He just won like all of the last whatever sprints that, are, that have been in Formula One. Uh, all of yeah, that's the last sprint race that he hasn't won. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like he won every single sprint race this year, despite not having the fastest car always. Um, I think it's just very good. Uh, Austria? I mean... It, yeah, it, they were very similar, but it wasn't like a clear fastest car. <laughs> you, you, can, you can you can go for it. I mean, I'm not taking your option. Yep, I mean you're you're playing it for a championship. Uh, no, for the uh, would we call it a championship or uh, just I don't know. I, I mean I'm the reigning world champion. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trailing behind by a few points. Um, ever since. Well, ever since like race six or seven, like when you overtake me. Uh, actually, you're having Norris win everything so far. Um, assuming you're gonna get him to win the Grand Prix, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, we're gonna get the Grand Prix uh, from P5 to all the way to P1 soon. It's uh, more exciting. I just, just a little more exciting. I'm gonna go with. With Lewis and P5, he's gonna stay where he qualifies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's such a good prediction. He's he like he's like a gravitational force towards P5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just always somehow ends up in the P5 from absolute randomness. Uh, it's it's a good prediction for Mercedes. Like, Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got it. I got it. Um, talking about consistency, I think Charles Leclerc has to be mentioned. Uh, his consist his consistency this season. If you're not counting that uh, triple header in the middle of the season uh, with the two DNFs. He's been in the top five every single time, I think. So, yeah, pretty much just super, super consistent. I think he's going to get another top four in Austin. Nice. <laughs> Ooh. I think that was the one driver that I didn't expect before, based on our predictions. Yeah, 
Okay. Uh, actually, be free. Uh, I, I I really wanted to, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think Max is going to eventually end up in P3, uh, taking the po another podium, uh, losing, what is it, like 10 points or 11, uh, if Lionel gets the fastest lap in the championship, but still good damage limitation in the podium behind the, uh, well, uh, a very quick car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I get it. We we were there uh, a year ago. <laughs> well, not a year ago, but before that, uh, Red Bull went to pretty much every single race. Yeah, now it's it's a little bit different. Orange, it's the it's a papaya one. That's actually uh, Chrome this weekend. They're bringing back the Chrome uh, car livery, which is pretty pr pretty nice looking. Uh, I assume. They're actually doing it because another team stole their livery for some reason. The Alpine is just McLaren with the BWT sponsor. <laughs> it's it's strange, but I mean, if that makes them faster somehow, good for them. <laughs> yeah definitely chrome is is heavier than than the black so it has to be like and not not black but carbon fiber because black is also a also a color and weighs some some kilos or some grams or whatever, whatever the measurement is so definitely mccarran is very confident in, in this race um and uh, I think I think I think and you think probably as well they're gonna get a one two uh, straight up get into it. Uh, Norris gonna finish ahead of ahead of Oscar. I think. I think Piastri is gonna jump Max in the race uh, through sheer pace. I think Max is not just not gonna be able to compete with the McLarens throughout the entire stint of the race. I think sprint race is uh, it being shorter brings man, Max much more uh, ability to fight, but still gets beaten by both McLarens and uh, yeah Piastri's is not gonna challenge Lando um because obviously there's a championship on the line. <laughs> yeah we were similar this weekend in a lot of options. Uh Kevin Yeah yeah, I'm. I'm very confident Max is gonna be in the top five in qualifying. That's that's for sure. Let's try. Yeah, not quite sure if if it's P two or in, uh, in the top three at all. But top five, I'm pretty confident that Max can get there. Yeah, Singapore was meant to be his worst race <laughs> in the last few as well. Max just made the difference. Perez was out in Q2 and uh, battling Colapinto for the last points being position <laughs> the entire race so uh, it, it just yeah the max factor is, is is still there it's just it just it's just very good max is fastest lap 
Um, yeah. Yeah, tricky indeed. This is, there's so many possibilities, like, so, so many drivers can take the fastest lap in a lot of situations. I think it's gonna be one of, yeah, that's true. But I know, f I think if McLaren gets the fastest lap during the race, which is very likely considering based on our predictions or and yours, they're having a one two. I think they will be safely heading for the fastest lap. And I think Red Bull will use Perez to get the fastest lap away from them on the last lap or second last lap, depends on how you see it. I think they're gonna pit him, sacrifice the constructors points. I think they're not caring about P2 ahead of Ferrari because they're probably gonna eventually lose it anyway. So they're just gonna use Perez to get one point uh in favor of Max in the championship fight. Actually, actually, I think you're. I know what you're going for because it already looks like uh, a pretty dominant weekend for Norris. Uh, <laughs> I can't bear it up. Uh, least impressive team. It's interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, okay. Least impressive team. Least impressive team. This, this, yeah. Yeah, I have no, no idea which team to pick. It was like, what was the last time we had a, a traditional circuit? Like, the closest to Kota is probably, I want to say Spa, but there was also a high speed circuit, maybe Hungary. I don't know. It's very difficult to say. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go for Alpine. It feels like a safe pick. They they have a bad weekend once in a while, and I just don't. I have the brain power as well. <laughs> If you're getting Max on the podium, you're not going. To, you're not going to get a point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lawson is not gonna have a, a great re debut, or <laughs> however you call it. Yeah, it's. I think we already mentioned the, the Ricardo situation in our last video. So, yeah, yeah. Liam, Liam is gonna get this final six races to prove himself. He's ready for the twenty twenty five Red Bull seat. So, this is. This is difficult, yeah. Uh, I just don't know what, what to expect. Liam was pretty good last year, but also Yuki seems to have improved even over, uh, like, uh, compared to last year. Uh, that's kind of true, but most, I think that's mostly due to Ricardo finding a uh, pace out of nowhere in a couple of races. So. Okay, uh, least impressive driver. I initially wanted to go for uh, for him, but I'm gonna go for another driver, I guess. Um, go for for George. I think he's gonna have a repeat of last year, uh, being off the pace uh, of his teammate. Which is also like, when you think about it, he Russell has beaten Hamilton in like over seventy percent of qualifying sessions, and in uh, also in. Uh, He's, he's leading pretty much every head-to-head -head in the Mercedes uh, partnership, except the points and the victories, obviously. So I think Russell being the better driver is the more likely, so I think him being below, significantly below Hamilton is going to like, basically deserve me a point for this impressive driver. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you could go for him if he has another Suzuka from last year, perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You also have to remember Perez does does well in uh, in countries with limited human rights, and uh, yeah, America is heading into a very complicated situation if they happen to not get Kamala voted. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm feeling bad for America, honestly. Like if they re actually reelect Trump. That the country is like completely done. <laughs> That's an interesting pick. Wow. So so he's getting beaten by Stroll. That's pretty much it. No. All right. Hey. He did, he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect. Okay. Most impressive team. Okay. I mean, <laughs> they are ex expected to dominate this race, right? I cannot pick them, even though it'd be probably the safest pick. I'm gonna go with a different team. No, maybe Haas. The American team is gonna deliver Hulkenberg a good car to get score some points this weekend, and Agerson is not gonna be far off. I think. Not double points, but it's going to be a good weekend for them, since all the other teams are going to be pretty much where they expect, but it has going to be a little bit higher. That's pretty much what I'm um, expecting. They're having a livery as well, uh, American, a little bit American, because there are some little bit little details, but still, um, especially very. Maybe could bring them some freedom points and <laughs> boost them up. Okay, go go for your most impressive team. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> it's been a long time, yeah. It's been a long time since Mercedes was a good car. Well, not good, not like it was. It wasn't a bad car, but perhaps, yeah. You're really stretching out your options to Russell, lazy presser driver. Well, Mercedes is the most impressive team. Oh, uh, okay. I, I don't know who's the, <laughs> who's the tired one. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, forget that. Sorry. Most impressive driver. For my side. Um, no, well, I'm gonna go with Max. I, mean, I think he's gonna have a really good weekend and with good damage limitations, gonna win the sprint, which is his first victory since, I think, Austria sprint, or, right? I think this was the last race where Max got a victory, it, it was the Austrian sprint, that was, that was nearly like four or five months ago, it's been such a long time since we, since we heard the Dutch anthem. Yeah. Wow. Yeah.
I mean, based on our predictions, probably picking land, though. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you should go for for someone else. Maybe a Sainz or Russell or Hamilton. Sergeant, <laughs> we actually forgot to change those. Sorry. Oh my god. Oh, you're you're my seer. Okay. Wow, I, it would be funny and pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, this is one of those circuits that could bring some, some shenanigans. And Williams looked pretty quick, like ever since the, the wind, uh, sorry, the summer break ended, like they were in a good car. And call paint the good score some points, definitely. Okay. Extra bold prediction. Hmm. Hmm. Do I go for? What do I go for? Oh. Okay. Uh <laughs> Does it count? Yeah, it, it was the first time it happened. <laughs> like from pole position, obviously. I mean, he he doesn't he kind of lose a position from wherever he's starting. He he has to not lose a position on lap one. Uh, like it, when you look at his stats from the season, he's pretty much lost positions almost every single time. In this entire season, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Law. <laughs> It's just law. <laughs> oh, okay, I lost on the NF. That's that's cruel. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean that's that's pretty cruel, but it also may be such a such a scenario like where he's card the NFs like so Wait, this only counts for uh, for the Grand Prix or also for the sprint? <laughs> that's that's a good that's a good point. Uh, okay, I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it should count for both the sprint and for the race for, for both of us. That actually makes my prediction a less likely one than yours. Oh, but actually, no, 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 it actually doesn't, sorry. Uh, no, 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 actually, I meant the reverse, I meant the reverse, sorry. <laughs> uh, my brain is not braining. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're done for the US Grand Prix. I'm very excited for this, for this, for this Grand Prix, and uh, for this entire weekend. It's been a long time since we had F1, uh, since, since we've been on such a good circuit like, like this one. I just love this circuit, it's so, so beautiful, so good for racing, and... That's awesome all around. Like top three track pretty much for me. Like this this track, Austria and uh, Interlagos, Brazil are my three favorite tracks uh, across both driving and watching the race. Yeah, I think I uh, I got 
I got helped by by the disqualification right last year. I think. Because I, I think, yeah, Hamilton and Leclerc got disqualified. I think I gained like three points thanks to that. Or something like that. May, may just remember wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're in the end of this recording. Thanks everyone who's been watching and, or listening or anything. <laughs> you may leave that, uh, down a comment down below. Uh, we much appreciate it. And Thank you for sticking with us. We're doing this with a lot of passion. We're having a lot of fun, uh, despite sometimes not feeling quite well. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Let's hope for a cracking weekend with a lot of action and a lot of excitement because it's Coda and it deserves to be like that. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, and see you next time.